looking for are how specifically are transcription factors, alternative splicing, and different polyadenylation. So basically everything we've been talking about, how are they involved in Drosophila sex determination? And then there are some review type questions about gene products. So things that we've already learned and um, that we're going to touch on again. And it's sex determination in Drosophila. Um, sex determination in Drosophila is, is one of the coolest real life this really happens every day in all those little fruit flies buzzing around your fruit to determine whether they are going to be um, the sperm parent or the uh, egg parent. So what their um, scientific sex is going to be. And, oh God, it's just so cool. I'm going to shut up now so that, so that we can talk about it. So here is just kind of an overview of what we're going to be talking about. Um, in Drosophila, sex is determined by alternative splicing. And there are three major genes in the pathway. We're going to be talking through, I'm going to step you through each and every one of these genes and what's happening to all of them. And we're going to be kind of filling out this little table as we go. Um, and, and please don't take this table as the end all and be all of what you need to know. I just think it might be useful as sort of a summary. And so we're going to be doing that as we go. All right, so three genes, sex lethal, transformer, and double sex. What's up with these genes? So in Drosophila, this SXL gene either gets transcribed and translated, so over here, or it doesn't get transcribed and translated. In females, the SXL gene gets transcribed, so that means it gets transcribed to mRNA, and then it gets translated into a protein, whereas in males, that doesn't happen at all. So the, this SX, SXL gene does not get transcribed, doesn't get transcribed to mRNA, and so then, of course, it can't get translated into a protein. How and why does that happen? Well, this is super cool. It's all based on whether the individual has a one-to-one -one ratio of X chromosomes to autosomes, or whether they have that a half ratio, like as males do, which is exactly what we talked about. This is how it determines sex. Well, why? Why does that matter? Well, it's all about transcription factors. So in the female, because she has two Xs, what she's doing is she's producing enough transcription factors for this SXL gene that it can that it can be transcribed. Whereas the male is producing half as many transcription factors. That's not enough to get active transcription happening happening in this SXL gene. How freaking cool is that? So this little blue dot is representing a transcription factor. And so in females we get enough transcription factors that we get transcription of the SXL gene. So that's what the little green check mark is representing. Whereas in males, we don't get enough transcription factors. SXL gene is not transcribed. So if we're getting transcription and translation in females, but we're not getting transcription and translation in males, what's going to be produced in females that is not produced in males? Okay. So hopefully you thought through the central dogma, which means we get transcription and then we, when we get translation, we get a protein. And so in females, what's happening is that this SXL protein is being produced. This SXL protein is not being produced in males. So here's our table so far, thinking through our three genes that we're talking about, what's happening in females, what's happening in males, in females, the SXL protein is being produced. SXL protein is not being produced in males, so I just left that blank. If you're filling out your own table, please feel free to put whatever information you want here. If you want to put no SXL protein so there's not just a blank there, please do that. Okay, so in females, we're getting the SXL protein produced, and we're getting the SXL protein produced because of the differential production of transcription factors. So remember, transcription factors can upregulate or downregulate 
um, the transcription of a gene. And let me, let me go back and clarify here. Transcription factors. So remember that there are two different types of transcription factors. So these transcription factors that we're talking about, these wouldn't be the general transcription factors. The, these would be the specific transcription factors that can bind to those cis acting sequences and up or down regulate transcription. So in this case, these would be up regulating transcription in the female. And in the absence of these up regulating transcription factors, we don't get male transcription. Okay. So awesome, we get an SXL protein. Why do we care? Why does that matter? Well, the SXL protein happens to be a splicing repressor. So remember we talked about how splicing can be controlled once again by cis, the interaction of proteins with cis acting sequences. Those cis acting sequences are in the introns and you can have a protein come and interact with those cis acting sequences. So the SXL protein is a, oops, sorry about that. The SXL protein is a splicing repressor. And so that is going to bind with a silencer in this intron right here. So SXL splicing repressor comes and binds with a silencer in this intron, which is a cis acting sequence. We have no SXL protein here, so there's nothing to repress splicing happening here. So this SXL protein comes and it represses splicing at this first splice site. So this little um, skinny line represents an intron. This big blue hunk is an exon, and then we've got another exon here. And I'm not sure why that's two different colors. So right here at the very edge of that intron where it encounters the exon, we have a splice site. So we know that from when we learned about splicing. Um, what SXL does is it stops splicing from happening at that first splice site. So if there's no SXL over here, then splicing happens at that first splice site. Well, then there's another splice site back here. This little white line represents that other splice site. So if SXL inhibits splicing at this first splice site, then splicing proceeds at this second splice site where that white line is. So to show you kind of, okay, because I think that these images can be a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like if we put it all together. So in female specific splicing, our mature mRNA is going to have this first exon right here. And then it's just gonna have a little tiny chunk of that darker green part of this exon. And then it's gonna have the rest of that lighter green exon. Whereas in the male specific splicing, because, because splicing wasn't repressed at that first splice site, it has that entire chunk of that dark green piece. It has that whole thing. Okay, so why does that matter? That matters because in this first part of that chunk that was cut out over here, but left in over here, there's a signal that tells the cell, hey, stop reading this mRNA, we're done, right here. So when, when the cell goes to make a protein, it's only gonna read this first blue part and just this first little tiny green chunk, and then that's it. Whereas here, because that, that stop, stop signal got cut out, the cell is gonna read the blue chunk, the dark green chunk, and all the light green chunk, and it's gonna make a whole functional protein. So that stop signal, which we're gonna talk about more in our upcoming lectures, means that this protein is not functional in males. Whereas in females, because that stop signal was cut out, they produce a functional TRA protein. Okay, so in females, we get the SXL protein produced. What that does is that produces a complete TRA mRNA, which leads to a functional TRA protein. In males, we get an incomplete TRA mRNA and a non-functional TRA protein. 
Actually, you know what? That's not a good way to say that. Um, the tRNA mRNA isn't exactly incomplete. So we get, um, I'm going to say retained exon in the tRNA mRNA, um, whereas here it's cut out. And then that leads to a non-functional tRNA protein. So that's not a good way to say that. Let's clarify that. So retained exon in the male. Here we get um, a, let's say, truncated exon. Okay, that's, that, that's more accurate. All right. So the different mRNA in the female versus the male. In the female, we get a functional tRNA protein, and in the male, we get a non-functional tRNA protein. Cool. All right, so what does tRA do? Well, tRA is a splicing enhancer. Cool. And so what that leads to, oh, sorry, that should not be there. Let me get rid of that. That's confusing. All right, so tRA is a splicing enhancer. So what tRA does in the female is it goes to this splice site right here on this exon and it tells the cell, hey, we need to cut this exon or this intron out and we need to keep this exon. So that's what the, it tells the cell. Whereas when you don't have TRA, this splice site gets ignored. So the cell cuts here and it cuts here. So it just gets rid of this exon altogether in the males. So what does that look like? So I've numbered them here. These are the actual exon numbers in, in Drosophila. So in females, what happens is that exon three gets kept, exon four gets kept, and when exon four gets kept, there's a signal at the end that tells the cell, hey, you need to add a poly A tail right here. So if you guys remember when we talked about differential splicing, that's one of the ways that we can get differential splicing. So if exon four gets kept, then, then the mRNA gets cut right here and the poly A tail gets added, so exon five just goes away. In the male, because we don't have that signal telling the cell, hey, we need to cut this intron out and we need to keep this exon, this whole middle section gets cut out and exon three and five get spliced together. So what we get is we get two different mRNAs. And if we get two different mRNAs, then, then what are we coding for? It's two different mRNAs. You're producing this, the, you're putting these two exons together, which remember, we're just representing them with like little rectangular blocks, but these are sequences of ribonucleotides, right? This is an RNA sequence. So this RNA sequence, the, the number three exon is the same, but this RNA sequence is different in the male versus the female. So then what is that gonna produce in the male versus the female? Yes, different proteins. So the result is that in females, you get what, what's called the DSXF protein. So it's the female specific protein. And then in males, you get the DSXM protein, which is the male specific protein. And what these proteins do is they guide sex specific differentiation. So you get a female if you have the female DSXF protein and you get a male if you have the male DSXM protein. How freaking cool is that? And so that's based on differential transcription. That's based on differential splicing. So all of these things that we've been talking about, we pull those all together to figure out, to learn how Drosophila sex is determined. All right, so finishing up our table. Oh, I changed these, hang on. Okay, so finishing up our table with that fixed. So this TRA protein induces fem female specific splicing and this produces the female DSX protein where in the male TRA is absent. So because TRA is absent, you don't get that female specific splicing and you produce the male DSX protein. And this is what produces a female versus a male Drosophila fly. And I 
I hope, I hope, I hope, guys, that that you are like a little bit mind blown by that, because it's just extraordinary what happens just as a matter of course. All of and all of these things have to go right to produce a male or a female fly. Um, and so those annoying little flies flying around your fruit, just take a moment to be kind of amazed by the genetics, like the genetic dance that has to happen to, to make these guys one sex or the other.